In this lesson, we are going to take a look at how we can use the hatch command to add patterns to our drawing to indicate material. Before starting the hatch command, it's important to set the hatching layer current so that all of the hatching goes in on that layer. This is for a couple of reasons. One, it makes it a little easier to remove all the hatching from my screen if I need to. I can just simply freeze or turn off that layer. But also, typically that layer is set to print at a thinner line weight than the object lines. That way we get a little more visual difference between what is an object line and what is a hatching line. The hatching command is located on the home tab in the draw panel. You can also type H then press enter at your keyboard. After selecting the command, I'm given the hatch creation context sensitive ribbon. And the first thing we'll take a look at is our method of selecting. Right now it's actually in the pick points method. It's difficult to tell because that button isn't actually highlighted. But if I look at my command line, it is actually telling me right now to pick an internal point. So with the pick points method, I can simply just pick inside of a region to add my hatch pattern. As you can see, it can be a closed polyline, which this rectangle is. It can be lines that overlap each other as long as they create a closed shape somewhere in the middle. And it can also be an object that has some internal shapes or islands, if you will. In any case, I simply just need to click in each area to add in my hatch pattern. And then I can press enter. You'll notice that I created all three of these hatch patterns within the same command, and as a result, they're all selectable as one single item. If for some reason I wanted to change one of these three and make it different than the others, I can't do that right now, but I can do it by separating them out. And this is done here on the Hatch Editor tab. In the Options dropdown, I can choose Separate Hatches. And now, as you can see, these are each independently selectable. So now I can modify any of these. I'm going to take this first one and change the pattern and also the angle as well. So here on the Hatch Editor tab, after I've selected the pattern, I can go ahead and adjust my angle. Zero means that it matches the original swatch, so it doesn't necessarily mean that it's horizontal. In the case of the ANSI 31 pattern, it means that it's actually a 45 degree angle line. So I can adjust it the other direction by putting in 90 and enter for my angle. I can adjust my scaling as well. The larger this value, the more space between the lines. So if I change it to two and enter, you can now see the difference in spacing. And of course I can choose a different pattern as well, either by selecting it here in the pattern panel or clicking the drop down and choosing from one of the several different types that we have loaded in here as well. While I changed my hatch patterns after I placed them, you can also set up your hatch patterns before you actually place them. I'm going to escape to deselect this, and I'm actually going to erase a couple of these hatch patterns to show you a different method. And in this case, it is the select objects method. So I will begin the hatch command again, and this time I'm going to choose the select option here in the boundaries panel. And for this one, I'm going to pick an object. So in the case of this polyline, I can just click on the polyline, and as you can see, it adds the hatch pattern. If I do this again for this shape over here, you can actually see if I pick the outside shape, it doesn't recognize the internal islands. So that's one difference between using the pick points method and the select objects method. And also, if you don't have a closed shape, you definitely don't want to use that method. If I choose the select objects method and just pick these lines and press enter, you can see that it builds the hatch patterns off of the endpoints of these lines. And that's definitely not what I was going for. So once more, you can use the pick points method or the select objects method, whichever makes more sense in your situation. I'm going to back up one more time and redo this hatch pattern, this time using my pick points method. And the next thing I want to discuss is the associative option of hatch patterns. So if associative is turned on, that simply means that the hatch pattern is associated to the objects that I hatched. If those change, so does the hatching. So if I select this rectangular shape and stretch one of the corners, you can see that the hatch pattern goes with it. If I adjust the size of a circle or move it, again, you can see the hatch pattern is adjusted to match it. It is possible to break the associativity. For example, I'm going to explode this. And if I grabbed one of these lines and pulled them apart, I've lost the associativity. Even if I try to move a circle or something like that, you can see it's not going to update. So you definitely want to be careful. 
when you are working with hatches to not accidentally break the boundaries. The hatching tool also has a very nice option for matching existing hatch patterns. So for example, in this drawing here, I have a section view and I want the material in this circle to match the material that's already been hatched in the top view here. I don't know exactly which pattern that is, what angle or scale it is, but if I begin my hatch command, I can simply choose the match properties tool in the options panel. The command line asks me to select the existing hatch object. Then it turns into the pick points mode, so I can go ahead and click to place my hatch pattern. Then press enter. So once more, if you have an existing hatch pattern, you can simply use the match tool to quickly create another one just like it. Take a look at one more option of the hatch command, and that is adjusting the origin of a hatch pattern. Once again, I'm going to set my hatching layer current and start my hatch command. This time I'm going to use the brick pattern for this building. And I'm going to choose a scale of 12. And I'm simply going to click in here on the wall to place my pattern, then press enter. Again, going back to the idea of associativity, if I were to delete a window or move a window, then you can see that the hatch pattern is going to update for me. If I look closely at the first row here, it starts with half a row of bricks, which I'm not really happy with. I want it to start with a full row of bricks. And the reason why it does this is by default, the hatch pattern chooses the origin or zero zero as the start point for the hatch pattern. So zero zero is way down here in the lower left somewhere. It really has nothing to do with what I'm hatching. I can modify the hatch pattern and I have a couple of different options. One, I can specify a specific base point or I can choose an option to always choose the lower left corner of the shape as my base point. So I'm going to select this hatch pattern here and I'm going to go up to set origin. I'll select what I want to be the new origin, which is going to be the lower left corner here. And now you can see the hatch pattern updates so that I start with a full row of bricks and also end with a full row of bricks up top as well. I'll go ahead and escape to accept that. If I run into that situation again in the future, I can actually set the origin while I'm hatching by clicking the origin dropdown and choosing one of the corners of the object to act as the base point. So in this case, I could have chosen this option here to automatically choose the lower left corner as the base point of the hatch pattern. To recap, the hatch command allows us to put in patterns to represent materials. We can use the pick points or select objects option, whichever makes the most sense in the given situation. By default, hatch patterns are associative, so if the object changes, the hatch pattern will go with it. We can also separate hatch patterns out so we can adjust them differently, changing their scale, their style, or the rotation angle. We can adjust their origin points, and finally we can use the match tool so that we can match hatching to an existing one in the drawing. That concludes this look at the hatch command in AutoCAD.